Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is the Sentinel watching over Geekdom, and welcome back to Sentinel Vlogs. Today, I will be ranking my top 5 favorite Big Finish trilogies. Right off the bat, you will notice the format of this video is slightly different. Well, as we get into winter, there are less daylight hours during the day, and as of right now, I still use natural light for my lighting. Which means if I want to put out more videos, this may be the trade-off we have to make. And audio, what have you, with still images provided, almost like a podcast. Also, as we get into the holiday, my work hours are going to be frantic, which means I will have less opportunities to film. So anyway, as I said, I'll be talking about my top five favorite Big Finish trilogies, because throughout the monthly range and some of their other ranges, they do story arcs in little trilogies. I will not be reviewing the trilogies I'm talking about. Top five trilogies, that's 15 stories. Also, three of the trilogies I'm talking about I've already reviewed. But instead, I will just be giving brief synopsis of each trilogy, as well as listing what my favorite story in each trilogy is. Now, everything you see presented here is my own opinion. And if you're wondering why one trilogy didn't make the list, please understand I've only really been listening to Big Finish for about two, maybe two and a half years now. There are things I still haven't heard yet, so if, say, for example, one I haven't heard, the Oliver Harper trilogy isn't on this list, it's because I haven't heard it yet. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. And starting off our list at number five, one we have to change the name of slightly because we got another one this year, 2019, the first Perry trilogy. The Widow's Assassin by Nev Fountain, Masters of Earth by Mark Wright and Kevin Scott, and The Ronnie Elite by Justin Richards. The Perry trilogy is one of two stories meant to correct, let's say, the ending of the character Perpigillium Perry Brown at the end of Trial of a Time Lord. If you haven't seen Trial of a Time Lord, the quick crash course is that Perry was killed off in one of the earlier stories of that season, and then at the very end, it was revealed that that was a ploy and she's still alive. Perry's initial death was well, well received, whereas the retcon was not. The Widow's Assassin is one of two stories retconning Perry's death, the other being Perry and the Piscon Paradox. Of the two, I prefer Perry and the Piscon Paradox, but the Widow's Assassin is still really good. Anyway, the first Perry trilogy sees the Doctor coming back after the events of Trial of a Time Lord to pick up Perry. The Widow's Assassin deals directly with the aftermath of him abandoning her, basically, at the end of Trial of a Time Lord. Masters of Earth sees the Doctor and Perry arrive on Earth during the Dalek occupation, with the Doctor horrified because he is unable to do anything to help anyone, because his first Incarnation will show up in the serial The Dalek Invasion of Earth, and then the Ronnie Elite sees the Doctor and Perry cross paths with their old enemy, the Ronnie, this time played by Siobhan Redmond, who is my favorite Ronnie. The first Perry trilogy is great all around. Actually, all three of these, all five of these trilogies, excuse me, are great all around. But my favorite story in this particular trilogy is The Ronnie Elite. As I said, Siobhan Redmond is my favorite Ronnie. Nothing against Kate O'Mara, she did great with what she was given, but the Ronnie is meant to be a cold, amoral scientist. The only thing she cares about are the results of her experiments, and while Kate O'Mara gave a great performance, the Ronnie was always written as way too hot-blooded. She was written much more in common with the Master than this amoral, mad scientist they wanted her to be, and that's why I like Siobhan Redmond. It's why she's my favorite Ronnie, because that incarnation is much closer to the character on paper Pip and Jane Baker conceived. Number four, The Master Trilogy. And You Will Obey Me by Alan Barnes, Vampire of the Mind by Justin Richards, and The Two Masters by John Dorney. The Master Trilogy sees the Doctor, across multiple lifetimes, interact and confront various incarnations of the Master. In And You Will Obey Me, 
Peter Davison's fifth Doctor confronts the Jeffrey Beavers iteration of the Master. In Vampire of the Mind, the sixth Doctor faces off against the Big Finish exclusive Alex McQueen incarnation of the Master, and the trilogy comes to a close when the seventh Doctor faces the two Masters. This is a great piece for the Master as a villain. Not so much as a character, at least not to me, but as a villain, definitely. Jeffrey Beavers and Alex McQueen are both amazing. Especially in the two Masters, when they have to play off each other as well. In fact, the two Masters is my favorite story in this trilogy, and if you saw the Big Finish anniversary video I did earlier this year, it's also my favorite Seventh Doctor audio. Number three. The Mila Trilogy, Patient Zero by Nicholas Briggs, Paper Cuts by Mark Platt, Blue Forgotten Planet by Nicholas Briggs. The Mila Trilogy is the second half of the Sixth Doctor and Charlotte Pollard arc. After traveling with the Sixth Doctor for a time, Charlie runs into a woman named Mila, who claims to have been traveling with the Doctor since his first incarnation, although the Doctor has never been able to see her. During the events of Patient Zero, Mila switches places with Charlie, and then proceeds to adventure with the Sixth Doctor in Charlie's place, until Charlie fights to get to take her life back in the finale of this trilogy, and the Sixth and Charlie arc, Blue Forgotten Planet. This is a very interesting story. I mean, we only really get a story in Patient Zero and Blue Forgotten Planets. Paper Cuts is just kind of there, but Mila is kind of a fascinating character. She's also a little bit psychotic comes to mind. I don't think it's the right word because for exi- because she wants her time. Selfish. That's a good word for it. Because she wants her time with the Doctor and she's willing to do whatever it takes. For example, at the end of Paper Cuts... One of the Draconians wished to travel with the Doctor, even if it was just to get back to his home on Draconia. But Mila manipulated and convinced this Draconian that, no, the TARDIS is full, he's just being nice, you can't come. Just so she could still travel with him alone. There's a lot of great moments in these stories and throughout this particular trilogy, but my favorite story is Patient Zero. Number two... Going away from the main range, we'll go to the Companion Chronicles and the Sarah Kingdom Trilogy. Home Truths, The Drowned World, and The Guardian of the Solar System, all written by Simon Gurrier. As the name implies, the Sarah Kingdom Trilogy focuses on Sarah Kingdom, the companion from the first Doctor story, The Daleks' Master Plan. The Sarah Kingdom Trilogy sees actually really is set during the aftermath of one of Sarah's adventures, where a man named Robert is investigating Sarah. But is it really Sarah? I already reviewed this trilogy a while back, so I've already discussed these stories in detail and going into spoilers, so I won't go into it again here. Just know that this is absolutely phenomenal character work for Sarah, and even Robert, the character she interacts with, These are great stories, and Home Truths is my favorite. It's also probably one of my favorite Big Finish stories of all time, and it is definitely my favorite companion chronicle. So, before we get to number one, I do have a couple of runner-ups I'd like to give a shout-out to. First off is the Jamie Trilogy, City of Spires by Simon Bovey, The Wreck of the Titan by Barnaby Edwards, and Legend of the Cybermen by Mike Maddox. Like the Sarah Kingdom trilogy, I have covered this entire trilogy in full. Lately, I've seen people talking about it online and stuff, calling it the Land of Fiction trilogy, and I hate that name for it. Unlike the Master trilogy, which is also called the Two Masters trilogy, calling this the Land of Fiction trilogy gives away the twist in Legend of the Cybermen which happens to be my favorite story in this trilogy. But Colin Baker and Fraser Hines are great and play off each other really well. The other trilogy I'll give a shout The Mary Shelley Trilogy. The Silver Turk by Mark Platt. The Witch from the Well by Rick Briggs. Army of Death 
by Jason Arnoff. The Mary Shelley trilogy has a very interesting premise behind it. Doctor meets famous figure from history, and instead of just meeting them and having an adventure around them, they are the companion. In this case, as the name of the trilogy implies, it is Frankenstein author Mary Shelley. Paul McGann and Julie Cox are great together. They have this wonderful chemistry, especially because we get a very different kind of doctor-companion relationship. Because the companion is someone famous and the doctor admires, the doctor is played much more as a fanboy throughout the course of their adventures. There is a little bit of that trope I kind of dislike. You know, doctor meets famous person and the adventure they have inspires their famous work, with Mary Shelley, that being Frankenstein. But... It's not really played up all that much here. In fact, it only, thinking about it in hindsight, really comes up in The Silver Turk. And my favorite story from this trilogy is The Witch from the Well. The other trilogy I'll give a shout-out to for runner-up is The Villains Trilogy. Omega by Nev Fountain, Davros by Lance Parkin, and Master by Joseph Lidster. The Villains Trilogy was one of the things Big Finish did for Doctor Who's 40th anniversary, along with the Unbound range and their big 40th anniversary spectacular Zagreus. The goal of the Villains Trilogy was for the Doctor to encounter some of his iconic foes, but outside of the normal environment he usually faces them in. So, for example, Davros... The story has nothing to do with the Daleks. The idea behind this is that these were meant to be character studies in these villains. And they succeed for the most part. I have some nitpicks. And Davros is my favorite story in this trilogy. And number one. To date, my favorite Big Finish trilogy. The Cyber Invasion trilogy. The Harvest by Dan Abnett. The Reaping, and The Gathering, both by Joseph Lidster. So the Cyber Invasion trilogy is just as it sounds. Each Doctor, the Seventh, the Sixth, and the Fifth Doctor, are dealing with an invasion of the Cybermen. But the true purpose of these stories is to see how cyber conversion affects the companions, because someone close to them is being affected by the Cybermen being converted, what have you. The Harvest kind of has to do double duty because it's also introducing the new Seventh Doctor companion, Hex. But this trilogy is just so great. These companions get a lot of good moments to shine. Philip Olivier gives a strong introduction, again, as Hex. Janet Fielding is surly and salty as always, this time playing an older Tegan. And Nicola Bryant gives what I think is her, to date, her best performance as Perry in the utterly heartbreaking The Reaping. And The Reaping is my favorite story in this trilogy. So there you have it, my top five favorite Big Finish trilogies. And what do you think? Go ahead and start a conversation in the comments below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share my video around. And in the description box below, you will find the link to my Ko-fi, where you can help me by supporting the channel. And you'll find the link to my Twitter, where you can follow me and get updates on the channel. This is The Sentinel, watching over Geekdom, and I'll see you guys next time.